It's an eerie morning. Advent calendar. Day nine. This foggy morning where the afterlife, the eternal and the regular, <laughs> regular life kind of intertwine. It's complete fog city around here. You see that? Very, it's a really low fog. <clears throat> you ever driven through like a really dense fog? Been on a road trip one time. The fog was so dense. It was uh, in the valley from Northern California through Oregon. It's just this really low valley and it gets dense fog, rolls in. It's amazing. The advent calendar, you know, you wake up, you open a door and there's some chocolate every day and it used to have a Bible verse. And it was so special. So that's what we're doing here until Christmas. And then when the new year starts, we'll move on, do some radical stuff. Zechariah 6, 12 through 14. Here is a man whose name is Branch. He shall build the temple. The, he shall build the temple of the Lord. It says it twice. There shall be a priest by his throne with peaceful understanding standing between the two of them. It's kind of a shortened version of it. But it's an absolute mysterious miracle of a verse. First of all, the easy part is the very first part. Here is a man whose name is Branch. Now, we, we've already gone over the Advent calendar the first eight days. Several references of this being the Messiah, the Branch from Jesse, King David, the lineage of the king. You know, and, he, and, and we've gone over the fact that he's going to be from days of old. He's going to be an everlasting one. You're going to call his name Emmanuel. God with us. He will be the everlasting father. All these prophets, when they're talking about this branch, there's mention of his true identity is from the heavenly father, not just a man. Okay? Now, he, now Zechariah... Okay, he was uh, around, you know, 500 years before Jesus when they started to rebuild the temple. So this is the beginning of the second temple. And the academic, uh, you know, kind of mystery here is that Zechariah does, in the listing of names after this, of people working and building the temple, he leaves out Zerubbabel, which is like the guy who's named in other places as being the one to help actually build the temple. Because it's not a mystery, it's left out on, on purpose. Because the Lord, the one, the branch who is to come, he will be the one to build the temple the body of Christ, and that's why it's a mystery. He shall build the temple of the Lord, okay? First it says, he shall build the temple. He shall build the temple of the Lord. There shall be a priest by his throne with peaceful understanding between the two of them. Jesus is the high priest and bridges the gap between man and God, between heaven and earth. And the temple in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, is a plural, okay? Alem, alim. That's the plural, like putting an S at the end of a word in English. You know, like candy or candies. There's multiple pieces of chocolate or chocolates. There's many chocolates. Well, Jerusalem, Jerusalem is the plural. It is a double city, heaven and earth. That's why every time you see the temple being built, the architect or prophet would get, uh, uh, Ezekiel did, and maybe Zerubbabel did in this case, and uh, 
Isaiah and, and John the Revelator, they get, and you know, Solomon, they get inspiration from heaven to the exact dimensions for the temple to be built. The exact dimensions. So it wasn't a man, he got it from heaven. It's a replica of something up in the eternal. And that's really why you see the megalithic structures all over the world with fallen angel technology, they build these pyramids and they build these megalithic structures to the same degree all over the world, exactly the same because they've seen it before from where they're from. <clears throat> and these are replicas. So the temple of God, when it was being built in 500 BC, 500 years before the Messiah came, Zechariah is saying, the Lord, is he's going to build the temple and he's, he's going to build the temple of the Lord, and there'll be a priest standing between the two of them, and he'll have a peaceful understanding. Praise God. There's only one. That's Jesus Christ. And he stands in between. And then he says, is, and then Paul gets some revelations, is not your body the temple of the Lord? Praise God. We're the body of Christ. We are He, he building a temple without human hands. And he sits now in heaven with the Father, and is the, there's a temple there, and a te and the, like it's always a temple on earth, always a double. But you say there wait, there is no temple in Israel. Yeah, it's because the church is here, and he's standing in between, always with peaceful understanding. Thank first, of, thank you, Jesus, for having peaceful understanding over me over my family, over this town, over this state, over America, and over the earth right now in Jesus' name. It's still Christmas, it's still the age of grace, and you know, there's. it seems to be the gates of hell are trying to crack through, aren't they? Well, they will not overcome the church, the body of Christ, and that is the temple that's here on the earth right now. And then when the rapture comes... That temple is pulled up. That's when the temple in Israel will be allowed to be built. It just makes most sense that... Yeah, he, he stands in between the two of them. And there's always a, a, a semblance of it. Now there's these gaps in time where there is not one and there isn't the other it seems like you know but like for example when jesus left and in the temple the curtain got torn remember from top to bottom and the holy spirit left the temple and went up with jesus and then 40 days later the fire fell at pentecost and filled the christian church so there can be 40 days of a gap between two temples and where the Holy Spirit dwells can be gaps. There's, it's proven over and over. So we're sort of in that gap right now, it seems. How could that evil break through in Israel and do what they did on October 6th? How could it have broken through? It seems impossible. How can this war, how can all these things be happening? World War One and World War Two. In this last time, there's been some horrible Vietnam, Korean War, things America has done. The modern age of war and uh, genocide and like all kinds of parts of the world. How can this be? It's the church age. It's Merry Christmas. It's not supposed to happen. There's these, especially in the end, it's, it's like the fog, the, it's the two layers are merging together. That's another subject. Advent calendar day 9 is Zechariah 6, 12 through 14. And here's a man. His name is Branch. He is the branch. It's calling him out. Exactly who he is. This Messiah. And he's going to build the temple. And he shall build the temple of the Lord. And there shall be a priest by his throne always with a peaceful understanding between the two of them. Isn't that incredible? 
between the two, earth and heaven, heaven and earth. Thank you, Lord. There's a promise there. We're go we know our ultimate citizenship is in heaven. And we're the ambassadors and the representation of that temple right now. May the light shine in us. Thank you. Merry Christmas every day. You got to speak it out. I mean, I, I always feel so much closer to the Lord when I speak it out. Then I go throughout my day and start worrying about my own problems. And you can easily forget that we have the throne of grace and we're always in his presence. And he has a peaceful understanding of us. May that reign over you today and over me on the Advent calendar, day nine. The Prince of Peace came and he's here inside and he's coming back. Merry Christmas.